These five-year-old boys are lucky, although their faces might tell a different story. But being part of this UNICEF settlement means their families get free medical care. Today, it's polio vaccinations, hence the look of trepidation. It's a basic service, but means avoiding an overburdened public health system or the cost of private care. This three-year-old needs to be hospitalised, but her parents don't have the money, but desperate. The sunny Bill Williams, father of a year-old daughter, the hopelessness is overwhelming. Oh, it's so confronting because the similarities between you know, yourself and them, you can see yourself in their situation and what you do, and it's exactly the same. We're told later the UNICEF aid partner will pay for the treatment. Only 20% of Syrian refugee children have access to this kind of resource. The rest, predominantly in urban areas, go unattended. The older children know too well what they've lost to this war. 17-year-old Mohammed says when his family was in Syria, they lived well, had all the usual appliances, computers. But now in Lebanon, they have nothing. But as each of these teenage boys tells Sunny Bill their story, it's clear it's not possessions they missed most. It's education and the chance to earn a living. Because the Lebanese government doesn't officially acknowledge the refugees, they can't get proper employment. They're forced to take low-paid, under-the-table jobs. They have to provide for their family. You know. 16-year-old Ali says his father can't work, and when the money ran out, he had to leave school and take a job as a builder's labourer. He earned $15 a day, but that work ran out two weeks ago. Something's gone drastically wrong in uh, the world today when we have people sitting in here, um, not just sitting in here doing nothing, but sitting in here wanting to do something but can't and living in these conditions. With no schooling and no money, it's feared these young men are prime targets for rebel recruiters who offer payment to families if their sons fight in Syria. It's so tough, bro. It's so tough. You think, you put yourself in their shoes, um, they're... You know, some of them are their, their, don't have fathers, some of them their fathers are disabled or some of them uh, they're the only ones that are, are having to um, look after a household where their mothers and their sisters and you put yourself in those shoes, how much you love your mother, how much you love your sisters, what would you do, you know? It's a heavy session, lightened in the only way Sonny Bill knows how. You, you have heaps of friends? And, and uh, here, yeah. uh, you have girlfriend? and uh, <laughs> It'd be easy to come away feeling like there's no hope. But then we found it. In the middle of the camp, a school for the blind. 13 year old Rahan, who is now so proficient in brain, she's about to become a teacher. I don't know what she was writing. Perhaps a story about an all-black who showed the world who they really are. I'm not a politician and all of that stuff is uh, pretty unknown to me and I'm pretty sure you ask 95% of the population back home uh, what's happening with politics and things like that, they, they, they don't know. But what I do know is um, people shouldn't be living like this. And these people are just like us. And. Um, it's a sad world we live in at the moment. Right?